When it comes to the Italian Navy in the 1940s, it is often overlooked, save for a handful of major incidents. Incidents that reflect poorly on it at that. Such things as the raid on Toronto, often pointed to as the inspiration for the Pearl Harbor attack. Another infamous example comes with Cape Matapan, and the destruction of three-fourths of the Zara-class cruisers in one night of fire and explosions. A third, most infamous of all, would be the destruction of the battleship Roma. The most modern of Italy's battleships to be completed, as poor Impero languished incomplete, Roma saw a short service history. She would commission in 1942 and be sunk in 1943, missing the major Italian service engagements that her sisters and predecessors saw out. Her active service would end up lasting all of a year, never once engaging Allied surface forces, only to be sunk, in turn, by her former allies. Roma's tale is a sad one, if not quite to the same extent as Impero, a story that deserves to be told beyond never saw real combat blown up by a first-generation guided missile. More of a guided bomb, if anything, but we'll get to that. The battleship Roma began her short life as the third of the Littorio-class battleships. These were Italy's take on a treaty battleship, though in just about every way that mattered, they took the treaty and bent it over their knees. Well past any weight limits, these were large and powerful ships, though somewhat hobbled by Italian industry and the fact that they were very early designs as treaty battleships go. Their anti-aircraft weaponry, in particular, would prove to be less than ideal in actual service, though by no means the worst in the world. Now, to move into Roma's construction and service history. Roma was laid down on September 18, 1938, a good four years after her first pair of sisters. In this, Roma and Impero were an extra pair, intended as a direct counter to French construction of the Richelieu class and, less directly, as a general counter to the potential alliance of the British Mediterranean fleet with France's navy. This would give Italy, in theory, two four battleship divisions, the four Littorios as one modern division, and the rebuilt Cavours and Dorias as the other reserve division. The actual practicality of the latter is debatable, though a deep dive on the questionable choices in regards to the Dorias is a topic for another day. For her part, Roma was built with certain improvements compared to her older sisters. The intervening four years, and the experience building and operating the previous ships, had to be taken into account. Most visually striking in this case would be the change to Roma's bow to reflect issues that the older ships had with their bows. Roma would have this change made during construction, while Impero, laid down and launched first, did not. The other, more minor changes, were mostly detail improvements of the kind to be expected with experience in building and operating a ship class. Her weaponry and armor layout remained the exact same, other than the addition of some light anti-aircraft guns. This being the same 9 381mm guns as her sisters, mounted in the same triple turrets. Two on the bow and one on the stern, in a fairly traditional layout for a fast battleship. Her secondary battery consisted of 12 152mm 6-inch guns and four triple mounts, two each on port and starboard, mounted on either end of the superstructure. These were joined by four 120mm guns and a further 12 90mm guns, mounted in single mounts along either side of the hull. Her armor layout was a 350mm 13.8-inch belt in overall thickness. The armor layout is a bit of an interesting one, in that a decapping plate intended to shear off the cap of an armor-piercing shell was put in front of a main belt behind it. All of this formed the core of Roma's design. The experience and lessons learned in construction would show in another way, namely in that Roma took less time from her keel being laid to entering the water. She was launched on June 9, 1940, only a year and nine months after being laid down. This was on schedule to this point, as Roma was projected to enter proper service in mid-1942. As it would turn out, she managed that, but before we can get to that point, in common with ships under construction elsewhere while their sisters are in service, Roma would have parts pulled from her incomplete hull to repair one of her sisters from battle damage. 
More specifically, she had one of her propeller brackets removed. Vittorio Veneto, in one of her encounters with an Allied torpedo, had one of her own propeller brackets blown off. It was quicker and easier to pull one from Roma, still incomplete, to keep her complete sister in active service. So the Italians did such, pulling Roma out of the water in Venice in April of 1941. One of her propeller brackets was pulled off, and the battleship would be sent back to Trieste, down a shaft for more fitting out work. This process, after losing a part to her sister, continued relatively smoothly. She would be able to do her engine trials, more to the dock, in October of 1941. Her first voyage under her own power would come in November. With that completed without issue, Roma would test her main battery in May of 1942, before being handed over to the Regia Marina on June 14, 1942. For reference, and as I mentioned earlier, her initial order had specified a completion date in June 1942. Considering the delay to fix up her sister, this is a remarkable display by the Italian shipbuilding industry of the time. Unfortunately for Roma, this would be the last thing to go right with her career. By mid-1942, the time of Grand Mediterranean Sea Battles was largely over. The Regia Marina, never exactly flush with fuel, was starting to seriously feel the pinch of the war by this point. Roma and her sisters were largely confined to port, much as the Italian fleet had been in the Great War. While this is probably familiar territory for the refit dreadnoughts, it was a sign of the issues with Italy's ill-founded decision to go to war in the first place. Roma would spend the vast majority of her career swapping between various Italian ports. Toronto, Naples, La Spezia. Each time it was to either move to a safer port, or to try and potentially counter Allied operations by moving the fleet to a more advantageous position. Bombings in first Naples, then La Spezia, would demonstrate the real issues Italy had with protecting her fleet at this point. This took place over the end of 1942, in the early stages of 1943. On the upside, during this process, Roma would prove to be more fuel efficient and generally a better sailor than her older sisters. Her engines were more mechanically efficient, and her hull performed better. She had no issues making, and maintaining it seems, her 29 to 30 knot speed. This was, likely as not, a result of the modifications made while under construction so she was probably the best of the Littorio sisters, considering Impero lacked her bow modifications. But that didn't end up doing much to change her fate, as we'll get into. Though, as it would turn out, Roma's first real run-in with actual combat would, in an ominous foreshadowing of things to come, feature aerial attack. As mentioned, the Italian battle fleet was subjected to multiple bombing attacks. B-24 Liberators and Havro Lancasters had previously bombed the fleet, though without dealing real damage to the battleships. This would change on June 5, 1943, almost exactly a year after Roma entered service. American bombers, B-17s this time, dropped bombs on the Italian fleet. Littorio escaped with limited damage, but her two sisters would be hit by two bombs each. Roma came off the worst of the pair here, with two hits on either side of her bow. These were 2,000-pound armor-piercing bombs, which are not exactly small, even if they're no tall boy. The bomb that hit Roma's starboard side punched right through her decking, exploding alongside the battleship. This caused some serious, if not severe, flooding, while the second bomb, for its part, exploded in the water alongside Roma, missing the battleship entirely. Not that it mattered, because the explosion effect in the water buckled quite a few plates along Roma's port side as well. This bomb would flood several of her compartments, consisting of such things as her sonar room, brig, and food storage spaces. As well as her wine storage, which I'm sure led to many sad faces and much angry Italian cursing aboard the flagship when they were given the damage report. Regardless of the tragedy that was good wine being wasted, the more pertinent issue was that Roma was taking on about 2,300 tons of water at this point. Her bow was sinking into the harbor, and repairs were necessary. Repairs that would have to wait, as Vittorio Veneto would enter for repairs first, since she could be brought back into service quicker. 
During the wait to set off for Genoa for repairs, Roma would be hit again by another pair of bombs on June 23rd. These were smaller bombs and did little appreciable damage. One did some negligible damage to her aft turret, and the other damaged some staterooms. She would take no further damage before sailing for Genoa, arriving on July 1st and finishing her repairs by August 13th. Those repairs would end up finishing not long before her final voyage, as it would turn out. With the Italian armistice announced on September 8th, the main battle fleet set sail on September 9th. Initially planned to be used as a last-ditch defense against the Allied invasion of Italy, the ships now sailed to surrender and hopefully survive the war out of enemy hands. It was just that the enemy was Germany now instead of the Allied powers. And the Germans weren't inclined to just let them go. At first, the Italian fleet sailed for Sardinia. This was due to confusion on exactly how to surrender the fleet, but also because of a plan to transfer the Italian king to that island. The king, as it would turn out, fled in a different direction, and Germany had already occupied the port the fleet was sailing for in any event. Instead, they would set off for Allied territory. Unfortunately, the Germans spotted them at this point, and realized exactly what the Italians were trying to pull. The Luftwaffe promptly sent out twin-engine bombers at this point, armed with the Fritz X radio-guided bomb. The German planes caught up with the Italian fleet fairly quickly, though the Italians didn't open fire when they did. There was some level of confusion on what planes were trailing the fleet and who they belonged to, because of how far away the Germans were flying. The Italian admiral, it seems, believed them to be Allied air cover, at least at first. He would be proven fatally and tragically wrong. Once it became apparent these were German bombers and they were beginning an attack run, the Italian fleet opened fire. Their anti-aircraft batteries, not the greatest in the world, struggled to fire as high as the bombers were flying. When the first bombs were dropped, the Italians watched in puzzlement and growing horror as they realized the bombs were being guided down. One landed to the stern of Italia, the ex Latorio, jamming her rudder. While her crew worked to fix that, messages went back and forth between the battleships. Reports that the bomb was guided by the bomber, which remained above the fleet, seemingly steering it in. Another bomb would soon fall upon Roma, this time. And this begins why the video is titled The Way It Is. This first bomb hit on the starboard side between two of her 90mm guns. This was at 3.45pm. The bomb punched through Roma's armored deck as if it wasn't there, before blasting through her normal decks as well. This bomb ended up slicing through the ship entirely, exploding beneath Roma's keel. Her boiler rooms 5, 6, 7, and 8 were destroyed and instantly flooded. The same went for the aft engine room, the combination of which disabled her inboard propellers and dropped her speed to 12 knots. Electrical failings, temporary as they may have been thanks to heroic efforts by her electricians, also occurred here. This alone would have been crippling damage. Survivable, perhaps, but crippling in the same way that war spites run in with the Fritz X would later prove. Roma would not be as lucky as the British battleship. At 3.52, a second Fritz X hit Roma on the port side between her bridge and the super-firing forward turret. This bomb, like the first, punched through all of her armored decks. This bomb, unlike the first, detonated inside Roma's hull. Most likely inside her forward engine room, if the rush of steam from her hull before the killing explosion is any indication. Regardless of where exactly that bomb detonated, the results would prove catastrophic. The magazines of Roma's turret 1, the foremost one, blew first. This damage was devastating all on its own, especially as much of her damage control equipment had already been damaged, or outright destroyed, by the bombs themselves. It was the following detonation of her number 2 turret's magazine, the super-firing turret, that sealed Roma's fate. This explosion threw the turret, which weighed about as much as a mid-sized destroyer, 1,600 tons, into the air, where it would end up falling alongside the ship and sinking like a stone. Just imagine for a moment the explosive force necessary to do that and what it would do to a ship's hull. Unsurprisingly, this caused immense fires all across her bow, 
while also destroying her forward superstructure and killing everyone, including the admiral in charge of the fleet, instantly. By 412, Roma was already sinking. By 415, she had capsized and broken two, taking 1,253 of her crew down with her. Or perhaps 1,393. The numbers vary depending on the source. Regardless, Roma's sinking was catastrophic and a sign of things to come with guided munitions. Even so, I don't consider this a reflection of any flaws in her design. Just about any battleship would sink were they hit in the same way, with their magazines going up with enough force to throw turrets into the sky. That Roma remained afloat for as long as she did is a testament to her designers and the efforts of her crew. It's just a shame that Italy got themselves into a war they could never win, resulting in Roma only sailing for 133 hours in her entire life under her own power. Roma's wreck would be found in June 2012 by Italian explorers, though, alas, I have not seen much in the way of pictures of her wreck. Regardless, it is good that we know her final resting place. Her grave and those of the brave men killed aboard her. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.